1,716 people are in hospital, including 180 in ICU, of whom 48 are ventilated. And it's pleasing to see those numbers continue to decline. Of the 8,950 positive test results, we've got 5,289 positive rapid antigen tests and 3,661 positive PCR tests. The 3,661 positive PCR results were returned from 44,172 PCR tests. Sadly, we are reporting the deaths of 19 people with COVID, 14 men and 5 women. And of the 19 people who died, two people were in their 50s, one person was in their 60s, seven people were in their 70s, five were in their 80s, and four people were in their 90s. Can I just express my sincere condolences to those for the loss of their loved ones? Um, today, we also take the opportunity to give some more in-depth understanding of, of those who have died and the characteristics in terms of vaccination and underlying health conditions. So in the period of the, to the 4 p.m. on Thursday, the 10th of February, we have recorded 141 deaths, 52 women and 89 men. Five were in the age group 40 to 49, three were in the age group 50 to 59, 16 were in the age group 60 to 69, 34 were in the age group 70 to 79, 47 were in the age group 80 to 89, 35 were in the age group 90 to 99, and there was one person over 800 years of age. So of the 141 deaths, 32 were not vaccinated. Two had had one dose, 75 had two doses, and 32 had three doses. 53 of the deaths occurred in residents of aged care facilities and 11 were not vaccinated. One had received one dose, 23 had received two doses, and 18 had received three doses. There were 10 deaths in those under 65 years of age, five in their 40s, three in their 50s, and two in their early 60s. And we've been classifying and categorizing the information from medical records to just better inform the public and the community about the risk factors associated with those deaths. And just to clarify that people might have multiple of, of these comorbidities, what we call those underlying health conditions. So two people had diabetes, one had cardiac disease, four had chronic pulmonary disease, chronic lung disease, not asthma, three had asthma, two had significant immunocompromise, um, two had significant renal disease, two had cancers, uh, two had obstructive sleep apnea and one had a chronic neurological condition. Four were unvaccinated, four had two doses of vaccine and two had three doses of vaccine. And two with the three doses had significant pre-existing comorbidities. In terms of the place of death, nine people died in hospital and one died and was diagnosed at home in a post-mortem diagnosis. So that gentleman was a gentleman in his 40s and it was diagnosed um, following the referral to coronial system. Um, can I just sort of re-emphasise that COVID is a serious disease across all age groups. Um, so continue to get tested and get linked to care. Um, be aware of the signs your condition is worsening and we've got some really practical information on our fact sheet called, called the testing positive for COVID fact sheet. So please Google that if you've got COVID you should be sent the links when you get that notification. But I would urge everyone to get tested. Um, there are treatments available, and it's really important that people are linked to care. Notwithstanding as a public health person, I also enjoy seeing the data um, in the age distribution, but it's really important people are linked to care to both um, get access to the antivirals and other therapies, and so they know where to escalate their um, concerns if their condition deteriorates. Thank you. Thank you.